pray with you. Pastor is available to do that tonight. If you're here in this service tonight and you don't know that your sins are forgiven, you don't know that you're on your way to heaven. We've not preached about that tonight, but I'm telling you, we can help you with that from the Word of God. And we're ready to. We're wanting to. Just mention something to Pastor or myself. Christian, during the invitation, could I encourage you just to make things right with the Lord where you are? If you wanted to kneel, you could. You could do it where you're standing. And just say, Lord, search me, try me, and know me. God, I've been given direction from your word tonight. Where do I stand? And I think the Lord will help you with that. Heavenly Father, may the invitation please you. This is an important time, Lord, as we come to the conclusion of this preaching time and how I pray that you would do the work that only you can do. With our heads bowed and eyes closed, let's quietly stand to our feet. <clears throat> and while you're standing, she's beginning to play. Make things right with the Lord tonight, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever it might be. Are you loving your brother? That's the commandment that he is specific about. 1 John chapter 2, <clears throat> verses 7 through 11. It's important. It's not a trivial matter. It's not one that lacks importance in our life. It's crucial. You're not in fellowship with God if you don't love your brother. We do want to be in fellowship with them. And then pastor will come and conclude the service he sees as he sees fit. Nearer, more nearer. Is that where you're going tonight? Or are you going further and further away? just a moment we're going to sing that verse first verse number three four zero if you need to find it i hope that you will i hope that'll be a prayer of your heart tonight that you'll grow nearer to the lord brother chris will lead us didn't mention this evening anything specific you know sometimes the reason people are hard to love is because they've hurt you and they've done things specifically to you and God doesn't say that that is, makes for an exception it just says to love them and I think this is a key in the life of probably most Christians an area of your life that if you don't deal with you just can't go past you can't go any further. And I believe that probably for many of us, this would be a matter where God wants to deal with us and our only response is love. Here is the love of God perfected in us. And we need to learn to love like Christ loves. I would challenge you tonight not to simply hear the message to apply it and act on it. You watch and see what God does for you and does in your life. And it is an overwhelming reality 
that God loves us. When you begin to grasp, because I don't think anyone fully grasps how much God loves you, it's overwhelming. You know, I just there's times when I think about the love of God, and it just there's no there's no way you can comment on it. There's no way you can describe it. It's it's so great. But you won't understand God's love if you don't love your brethren. And it'll be something that'll hinder you in your Christian walk. If you're here tonight, maybe for different reasons, maybe because you were standing closely next to someone, and you felt like you ought to pray with someone or get some help, some Bible answers in this matter, uh, Dr. Coyle will be over by the door, and his wife is at the piano. My wife's not able to be here this evening. She had to leave town because of family matters. But we would like to pray with you. We'd like to help you. And tonight could be one of those corners that you turn in your life, in your Christian walk. And so don't leave. Uh, I'd beg you without doing business with the Lord. If God spoke to you, it's because He wants you to respond. We're going to dismiss in a word of prayer. Brother Chris, would you dismiss us? Dear God, thank you for allowing us to be here tonight. Help us to love you with all our hearts and love our brethren also. Give us a great love for others. Help us not to have hearts about ourselves, but uh, to have hearts for others. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And that God's standard for personal holiness isn't what we would think that God's standard is. It is what the scripture says that it is. And so consider this. We are not supposed to have an attitude of doing things based upon what our personal feeling is. Now, do you feel like giving to the Lord this evening? Well, praise God if that feeling comes from God. But that's not the driving motive for a Christian to give. Uh, and, and it says, even as the Gentiles, which know not God. So unbelievers do what they, they think is right, right? Somebody that doesn't even know the Lord would at least do it if they're a good person, quote-unquote, without Christ. They would at least do what they believe is right. And so I would say that this evening, if Fort Lauderdale Baptist Church just did what was right by a standard of a lost person, there would be a minimum standard of what we would give to the Lord, wouldn't there? But would you agree with me that sanctification involves more than that? Even the Gentiles, the Gentiles are the ones that do what they feel is right. Christians are concerned about more than that. They're consider, concerned about personal holiness. And so let me make my application. I don't want to preach a message tonight. There's a list of infinitives in verse 6. is that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter. That cause that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Let me address some thoughts that perhaps some of you think and that. Probably, maybe you don't, but maybe you know people that think these thoughts, and so you can look around and stare at other people and say, well, I think that's, a, that's what they probably think. When an evangelist comes to the church the size of ours, many times we think, well, our church is very small. And so our evangelist would expect that our offering would not be what the offering would be in a larger church. A lot of people would think that. And I want to submit to you this evening that that's a bad attitude. As a matter of fact, I'll bet you Dr. Coyle, and he wouldn't, but I'll bet he could share with you churches that felt that way. And weeks that the Lord's people didn't meet the needs of God's man. And he probably wouldn't do that, but I know people that could. And it would be a real shame if Fort Lauderdale Baptist Church did what the Gentiles would do. And based upon their feelings, they gave what they felt was right according to what they think. This evening I would ask you to consider that it would be defrauding a brother in Christ if we did not give what he deserves for a week of preaching. Let me testify to you that I believe that Dr. Coyle has invested more into this church this week with regard to his time, his energy, his preaching than he, than he is able to in most churches. I don't see how he could do more than what he's done for our church this week, both in the preparation of his messages uh, and, and in a number of ways. And there are many people that could testify that that is true. And he has done no less here than he would in a church of 2,000 or 3,000 or whatever.